Nancy! Hey. Hi. So what time did you get home last night? I'd like to just eat my breakfast without being interrogated. Is that okay with everyone? Is it? I've already answered a litany of questions from these two. You want to ask them. I'm sure they'd love to tell you. Okay. Ow. What's wrong with you? My hands feel like pins and needles. I think I slept on them or something. Yeah, me too. Same. Uh-huh. So, is anyone going to tell me what happened yesterday? I visited the Hathorn house. And? I found Olivia's jacket in plain view. Hmm. Seems too obvious. It is. Olivia has been involved with some scare pranks in town, mostly drumming up business for her tour. But we don't think she's a suspect. Her alibi? She was working. Working? As was everyone else in town at the time. Minus May, of course. There's definitely a will. Okay. Do we have it? No. But I found a letter written by Francis Tuttle specifically stating that a will exists and was written for Lauren. Could have been burned in the fire. Could be the reason for the fire. None of this helps May. We need a perp, not a possible piece of paper that no one can find. A perp? We should still try to find it. It might be motive. And it would mean the difference between keeping or losing a home. Well, they saw it. It? An anomalistic paranormal projection. You mean a ghost? That's exactly what I mean. You know what I'm talking about. Okay. Anyone else see it? Olivia Ravencroft. The witch? Except she claims to have seen Judge John Hathorne, not Abigail Hathorne Woodley. Well, there you have it. She sees something different than all of you. Clearly she's lying. She probably rigged the whole thing up. I don't think so, Deirdre. It's not an act. She was genuinely scared. Ergo! Therefore... No, sorry. Not ergo. Ergut. Your hands! Ergot poisoning. You really think it's possible? Mass psychogenic illness by more than one person. Hallucinations, vasoconstriction in the hands and feet. Pins and needles. Exactly! Wait, what? What is that? Yeah... But how? Food or drink? Intentional? In this town? I'd believe it. What are you guys talking about? We could have been poisoned with ergot. Poisoned? What? The symptoms match. And it's not without precedent. Especially here. Oh. There's a theory that the accusers of the Salem witch trials were exhibiting strange behavior. But it wasn't witchcraft. It was because they had eaten rye infected by ergot spores. It causes hallucinations. It was also pretty common 300 years ago. I had an Asahi Super Muscle Builder smoothie for lunch yesterday. I did not eat some sort of Pilgrim Era rye porridge. So how could I get poisoned? I don't know. But I'd like to see if there are any sources of ergot in town. Good idea. I'll start with the judge. I should finally be able to get the CCTV access tapes. Frank, Joe? Can you guys check the cemetery for any traces of ergot? I'm not sure our ghost hunting equipment is... We'll figure it out. But I don't even know what an ergot spore looks. We'll figure it out. Deirdre, you can... No. Oh. Okay. Time is running out. If we don't clear May's name soon, I hate to think what this town will do to her. I'm coming with you. You better not let me down. Done. 
this No time to explore outside Salem's old town center until this case is closed. Done. This looks great. Now to find a nice place to put it. What? No skipping through the halls this time? I've just realized that this case has taken a turn. About time. How do you figure? Intentional poisoning usually has one goal. To eliminate the target. Someone was trying to kill us. Ergot poisoning at high enough doses... Ends in gangrene. Which, yeah, is pretty bad, but it's not death. You really think this was intentional? And not some, you know accidental ingestion if you look at all the evidence yes olivia's jacket at the crime scene the spray painting of the perry house everyone's obsession to get may convicted you know what all these people have in common what they're women are you saying they're all witches or that this is a witch hunt i'm saying it's salem Can I help you, Miss Drew? I'm here for the CCTV footage. Yes, yes, yes. You can use this on the evidence room computer. You know where that is, right? Yeah, I found the pin code here, remember? Of course you did. Now run along. Run along? You know, I just realized I never followed up with you two about what you were doing on the day the A.W. evidence was stolen. Ugh. You know, Nancy, this detective thing is really sweet and all, but we are in the middle of something important here, okay? What are you doing? Initiating the process of handing over Hathorn House to the state so it can be turned into a museum. What? It's our only option. But you work for Lauren. It's her home. And I'm getting her an extra 90 days before she's evicted, which is 90 more than she would have had without me. So we're a little busy right now, because we need to file this by the end of the day. And May Perry? What about May Perry? Is she being charged? I won't discuss this. It's an active criminal investigation. But from what I've heard, an arrest will happen later today. So please, can you both leave us? Come on, Deirdre. I have the drive. Okay, distract me, Drew, so I don't go back in there and smash things. With what? Tell me, 
Tell me some inane detail from your life so I feel better. When were you come off badly? I know. Tell me what Ned said when you told him you saw a ghost. Oh, shoot. I totally forgot. I said I'd call him back and I didn't. You forgot? Do you even want a boyfriend, Drew? Because that is a fine young man some other girl might appreciate more than you. Some other girl? Yes. Like a nice girl who knows him well and thinks he's cute and would remember to call. You know I'm a detective, right? This mystery girl? Not so mysterious. Shucks. I was trying to throw you off with nice. Oh, come on. You're in no danger from me, Drew. You could never call Ned again, and he'd still be sitting by his phone waiting for you. Maybe. After this, I'm going with him on vacation. No cases. I think you'd hate that. You need a case. You're a mystery addict. Get him to help. Romance, adventure, a tropical location with stunning sunsets. That actually sounds like an amazing idea. I know. Also, I hate you. <laughs> Thanks, Deirdre. Nancy, how's my favorite daughter doing? Only daughter. Ugh. <laughs> that too. You okay? How's the case coming along? Not well. I have a bunch of alibis, but I'm missing something. Then there's the book of apologies that's been stolen, and the arson, and a break-in at the courthouse. Hey, hey, hey. Slow down. Let's focus on one person at a time. Who's on your list? Tegan Perry runs the museum in the center of town. The gatekeeper of the town. You mean like, the keeper of the town's history? Exactly. Anyone who runs a museum has a vested interest in keeping that history alive. I don't know Tegan, but I don't doubt that she feels some ownership over the town's past, present, and future. So, she wouldn't want to destroy Hathorn House. But? Well, she runs the accused witches organization. She's very passionate about their cause. Like, extremely. Being passionate and being destructive are two different motivations. It's not impossible, but it is implausible. May Perry is the primary suspect for the arson. And why is she the prime suspect? She's the only one who won't give an alibi for the night of the Hathorn House arson. I see. And she's been in trouble for a fire before, when she was a kid. Seems people want to believe the worst of her. She has a reputation for being weird and a loner. None of that explains why she won't give an alibi now. She plain refuses. Seems to me like she's doing it to protect someone. Or a group. Her sister runs the accused witches. But May doesn't seem too invested in their cause. She could be protecting multiple people. Maybe the whole town is in on it. I think uncovering her alibi is the key to unlocking this whole case. Yeah, you're probably right. If I could only get her to talk to me. There's a woman who claims to be a real witch, Olivia Ravencroft. That's quite the name. She's quite the personality. She lures everyone to her witch tour in the square, performing street magic. It's really something. She sounds like an entrepreneur. But would she be motivated to burn down a historic building in her own town? Could add to the value of her tour. The myth of the cursed town of Salem. She also pushes this whole ghost narrative, suggesting a restless spirit might be responsible for the arson of Hathorn House, that they were set loose by a coven of modern witches seeking revenge. That could be a play to make money from tourism. It's cynical, but in today's day and age, I don't doubt it. There's something interesting about the whole coven thing, though. Not cracked it yet. Witches in Salem. Careful with that. You know I am. Also, I discovered she uses smoke bombs in her magic shows. Could be a pyrotechnical accident. Or intentional. Yes. Who else? Lauren Holt is the supposed heir of the Hathorn House estate. Why supposed? She's the adopted daughter of the previous owner, Frances Tuttle. And while Lauren claims there's a will, no one has been able to find it. How did her relationship with Ms. Tuttle seem to you? Close. But then wouldn't Frances have kept the will available if that was the case? Either way, I struggle to justify why she would burn down the house. Oh, any number of reasons. 
she could feel that the house is Ms. Tuttle's and refuses to let it pass into anyone else's hands. If any of these other players have their eyes on repurposing it as a museum or entertainment venue, she could view that as an affront to Ms. Tuttle's memory. Well, she also lives there. Not in the burned part, in a separate carriage house. By burning it, perhaps she hopes to ruin the chance of anyone else using it, and to stay on the property indefinitely. Judge Danforth. Okay. Look, he's coming on strong trying to pin the crime on a girl without any evidence. It's a bit... Strange. Unbecoming. He's supposed to be impartial, but he's really going after this one teenage girl, May. Well, look, he was like a mentor to me in college. We've kept in touch, but I do not know all the details of his situation. Is he in financial trouble? Is this a ploy to get a piece of property? I don't know. Which would be ironic, because that's exactly what Judge Hathorne did in 1692. But May isn't involved, at least from what I can see, in the question of ownership of the house. Could be about the people May is related to. Go after her as means to hurt the ones she loves. It's extremely unsettling for a judge to do that, but it has happened before. Alicia Cole is helping Lauren Holt, the supposed heir, with paperwork. Alicia claims she was running errands around town. Oh, she was. She was. Yeah, I was talking to her on the phone about Lauren Holt's case. Ha, huh, look at that. I'm confirming her alibi. Well, that doesn't happen very often. Talk to you later. Thanks. A demolition offer for the Hathorne house. Why in the world would Alicia have this? This looks like some kind of map. The requested section of the Salem Waterworks marked an access point. Why would Alicia have this? A map of Salem. Let's see here. If I align the waterworks map properly, I should be able to figure out which area it represents. The Hathorn House. I need to know what's at that mark. Well, I think Jason is lying to us. I'm hoping the CCTV footage will prove it. Bad news. The footage isn't sorted. We need to put it together in a timeline.
Yes. Let's see. It's a shame we can't make out the perp's face. <laughs> perp? What? Isn't that what you call them? Suspect, Deirdre. This isn't a crime show. Well, I kind of like using it. Maybe that's my calling card. And yours is, well, whatever it is that you do. Thanks. For what? I think that's the first compliment you've ever given me. It's not a very good one, but I'll take it. Don't get used to it, Drew. Come on. This car looks like our best lead. Hmm. I swear I saw one just like this parked outside the courthouse. We should check it out. Ladies, ladies, ladies. Boy, boy, boy! So, what's up? You guys looking for directions, or...? You seem to hang out a lot in the square. Well, yeah. It's a good vantage point of the whole town. Yeah. Oh, look! I can see the courthouse from right here. Can you see it, Nancy? I can. Yeah. You can see a lot of buildings from the square. It's a square. So did you see anyone on the day the A.W. evidence was stolen from the judge's office? No, because I wasn't here. I was working for Alicia. What kind of work? Helping her run errands. What errands? Dry cleaning and stuff. Uh-huh. Look, just ask her. She'll confirm it. We will ask her, Jason. Thanks. Do you know May Perry? What? May? Yeah. Why? What does she have to do with this? Because she's going to be arrested for these crimes by the end of the day, unless we start coming up with answers. What are you talking about? That's ridiculous. There's no way she has anything to do with this. Wait, you know May? Like, know her? Yeah. Do you talk to her? We know she doesn't have anything to do with these crimes, but everyone thinks she does and that's good enough to get her into serious trouble. Well, that's too bad. Ha! Found it! Ladies, ladies, ladies. Boy, boy, boy! So, what's up? You guys looking for directions, or...? Whose car is that, parked in front of the courthouse? That's Alicia Cole's car. You're sure? Yeah. I washed it last week, and the week before that, and the week before that, and the week... Yeah, okay, we get it. See you later. <laughs>